Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hanging Out with Howie on Monday nights. DishJockeyNewsTV.com forward slash chill. And tonight, I am honored with my good friend, Brian Red. We've Hello. got Bill Marsh from Maryland, and I remembered this time the correct state. And Big Daddy is in the house. Hello, Big Daddy. Evening, 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 gentlemen. How are we this evening? And, of course, we have Alex from Cyprus. It. Beautiful Cyprus. Hello, Alex. All righty. Hey, guys, what I was thinking here was uh, we have advertised it, how to be an awesome guest. I was perusing the groups and stuff on the... You know, be an awesome guest at a wedding that you're not DJing because I, I read this, this comment here and, and I'm going to paraphrase it. So I don't out anybody, no names or anything, but uh, is anyone familiar with the XYZ request app? I'm attending a wedding and they will use this app. I want to request songs that I know that will do well, but I also want to time my requests well. How do oh, I don't be bother. Happy? Sit, sit well, your ass me. down. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> you, 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 all right. Let me try the punchline again. <laughs> I know I will do well, but I also want to, to, to time my requests well. How do I be awesome? Okay, Sean, how would you be awesome at the wedding? All right, Brian, you got listen, laugh all you want. Sit your ass down, mind your business, let this person do their job because they hired them for a reason. They hired them. If you're a DJ and you're invited to the wedding, act like a guest. And mind your business. Don't walk up to the DJ like I had two weeks ago. Guy walks up. Oh, I know the bride so well. We've been friends forever. Ask for a song. And the song is on the do not playlist. And I said, I guess you don't know them that well. Because here, it's on a do not playlist. <laughs> oh, they must be crazy. Now I said, you are. Have a great night. Goodbye. Guys, if you're going to be a guest at a wedding... Enjoy yourself. Eat the food. Yes, they feed you as a guest because, you know, all these things that you see up on D uh, all these Facebook places. Oh, should you get fed at a wedding? Yes, as a guest, you get fed, kids. Honest to God. And um, just mind your there's a playlist that is being played. OK. Recording. These people oh, record, are we still recording? God bless us. Yes. Um, um, but Brian. Don't fall over in your chair. I am so adamant about this. I, like I said uh, before we started recording, I'm, do, I'm a guest at a wedding this weekend. I am so excited to just sit, eat like the fat guy that I am, all before 8 o'clock. Every buffet is going to be fat guy friendly as far as I'm concerned. I don't care. And then at 8.05, I will not eat. I'll just sit. I will hang out with some wonderful friends. And when I'm ready for bed, I'm out the door. Leave a nice big envelope for my boy, Matthew, and get to hang out with people I haven't seen in a while. Isn't that what you're supposed to do as a guest? I'm not sure. But so. Isn't that what you're supposed to do as a guest? Brian and Howie <laughs> well, and Bill. Well, and I want to be clear with you here, guys. Sean. I, I'm not <laughs> laughing at your concept. I'm laughing at you because you're funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. Your, your concept is dead on. Your delivery is just funny. That's why I was laughing. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Listen, we see all these things about should a DJ be fed and this and that and the other thing. Well, my friends, that's all, you know, up to the place and the public. As a guest, yes, my friends, you will get fed. Yeah. Done. Done. <laughs> but as far as your request go, whoever XYZ, whatever it is, Keep your request to yourself. Let them play the music that they're hired to do. Okay, Brian, how would you be <laughs> awesome as a guest? <laughs> I know how, but I'm gonna, I'll let Brian say, go ahead, baby. God, well, no, all, all I was going to say, Sean, and, and is that, yes, 
anytime we are anywhere in public and somebody else is programming for the audience that you might be a part of, it's an occupational hazard to yeah. think, what are they doing? Oh my God. But, but you must learn some self-control and understand <laughs> that, you know what? It's not your turn. It's their turn. It's their turn. And there's a reason they hired this person and not you. Right. They wanted you to be the guest. They wanted you to be a guest because they love you that much. And they're honoring you with being a guest. Yes. Not simple. So if you want simple. to be awesome, shut the pie hole and yeah, eat some pie or some you cake. Got- Shut your mouth and eat the cocktail hour food. Everything will be wonderful. Done. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bill, I'm from sorry. Maryland, what do you got to say? And Carlisle Entertainment, by the way, very good outfit. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, you know, what I have to say is, in most cases, for me, it's a hypothetically spoken situation because in almost 20 years, I haven't been a guest at a wedding. It's because you don't have any friends, but that's okay. Right. Well, that's another show. Oh, right. Brian, you know how much I love you for that? I love that. I have no friends either. The only reason I was ever a guest at a wedding is because both of my kids got married. That's the only way I was a guest at a wedding. Nobody. Yeah, like, nobody. That, that <laughs> last wedding, he's, he's dead right because the last wedding was my cousin's wedding. And the, it, at her wedding, um, she did reach out to me and said, I, I'm not really sure how to, you know, to approach this. I would love for you to be at my wedding, um, but I'd also be happy if you wanted to be the DJ at my wedding. I'm happy to pay you to be that. And I'm like, when's your wedding date? Told me. Real Another quickly, occupational said, hazard. Gosh, I'm sorry. I'm already booked that day. Yeah. And, you know, so the timing worked out that I was able to attend the wedding all the way up to dinner and then left. Um, I, I provided a DJ for their wedding. Uh, they booked him through me. And he did a great job. I never once said, hey, Jack, you know what? You should do this. Um, you know, throughout the whole night. At one point, he came to me, knowing I was going to be leaving soon, and said, is there anything you know I, sh- I should know about about your family? And I'm like, uh, good luck. <laughs> They're people. <laughs> Play music for him. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Good you know, luck and God bless. Good luck and God bless. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, give, <laughs> let's give Alex a chance here. Alex, uh, how would how would you be awesome at it as a guest? Uh, well, from the from the request front, you know, simply you just go to the toilet. You know, you look yourself in the mirror and you just say to yourself in the mirror, "I am not the DJ. I am a guest. Relax. <laughs> Everything will be okay." You know, uh, but. Wait, I, it's our job. So, like, you know, when we are at other functions, you know, be it a wedding or a party, private event, and they've got a DJ, you, you know, in the back of the mind, you're like, what would I do kind of thing? You know, it's a bit like, you know, you become that uh, backseat driver. You know, you're the guy in the car that's like, you know, go, just change gear just about now. Revs are getting a bit high. You know, don't forget to indicate mirror signal maneuver. You know, but you're there as a passenger. You know, Cow. You know and that's what you are as a guest. Stop. You, know, you should relax. <laughs> that's friggin' awesome. Oh, my God. I love it. Oh, All right. Oh I'm going gonna, to get my take on this. Please. And I guess it's, it's a little bit different because I have not had the urge to critique the dj any more than if i'm out to dinner with someone i'm not like looking to see oh man that chef he should be using a stainless steel pan to get the right char come on dude what no i'm enjoying my the company that i'm with and i would do the same thing at at wedding and i have done that it's like it's like a day off. It's kind of nice uh, for me. It's like, oh, I'm not, I'm a guest. They're going to feed me, you know, because mm-hmm. normally I don't eat at weddings. And I'm like, well, I could eat and not feel guilty or, <laughs> or even, I mean, and I have eaten at weddings that, you know, they'll bring it up to me, but I don't go to, uh, you know, the vendor table or anything like that. If they offer that, I just, it's like, I'm good. I have, you know, I'm working and, and I'll be fine. And sometimes they insist they'll bring a little fold out thing and give you, you know, something. But for the most part, um, yeah, I'm I'm just uh, I'm, I don't know. I guess I'm different, but I, I just don't 
don't uh, I don't give it a second thought when I'm a guest. I can think back the last two times I was a wedding guest. And well, you gotta understand, first of all, that okay, most of some of you know, some of you don't. My wife's Hispanic, so the events that we attend are typically mixed. And there's a lot of Spanish being spoken at the events. So as much as I'd love to engage in conversation with people, my mother-in-law doesn't speak any English. I guess she's cool. I've been told she is, but we don't communicate. So everyone's speaking Spanish. I don't. So I'm just literally sitting there. And I have no choice but to look around the room and see what's going on. And to... So I remember one I went to. I didn't stay long. But I do remember that. And I didn't want to critique the DJ. But the DJ was playing Nat King Cole for dinner, which was the sleepiest music in the world, right? And the DJ was also playing the Nat King Cole's greatest hit CD, which also contained the Christmas song. And it was July. And I heard it twice. That was weird. <laughs> that was very weird. But whatever. Oh, I like it. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the other one I went to, they actually had a band. And... The, the song the band opened with was unusual. And, and, and they got dancers for this. And it was Toto's Hold the Line was their opening song at a wedding. Interesting. And, and I got to thinking to myself, mm -hmm. no matter how good of a DJ you are, I'm not sure any of us could pull off Toto's Hold the Line as a first open no. dancing song at an event how cool is this that a band can do it must have to do with performance they're pretty good performers they know their audience i had no choice but to kind of look around and do that i i, I didn't want to do it i didn't want to but typically yeah it would be <laughs> awesome and, and all these are inner thoughts this is inner monologue here this isn't me telling anyone this this isn't me approaching the band or the dj saying this this is all inner monologue stuff which is where it needs to stay to be awesome as a wedding guest Mm. All right, we're going to move on to the second thing I found on the interwebs. Mm, and uh, look at you going I crazy. Think, I know I'm trying to be topical. Nice. So how he's doing his second, research. Yeah, yeah, the second thing this. Well, the second thing I found this week is I find that as DJs, we're our own worst critics. And I have a few examples, but I'll just do one. It says, what is that one song wedding couples always remember? Is it the first dance, the cake cutting, or the last dance song? I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yes. and you commented. That's, I why, I I, that's that. why I brought this one up. And the guy said, I forgot to update my computer. And for the first dance... I played last week's song and I quick had to get out and I feel like I ruined the whole wedding. Get over yourself, kids. Yeah, so, babe. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 point, the point of the poster, I remember this. So what song are they going to remember the most? The one you screw up. That's the one they're yeah. going to remember. And I'm thinking and to myself, I, get over yeah. yourself, dude. They're not going to even remember that in an hour. You're right. going to remember it. But no one else is. Maybe the DJ who's being an awesome guest at the wedding might remember it because they're because being... we're awesome guests, Ryan. Because right. we're but... awesome guests. Hello. Right. right. <laughs> and you never Nobody's know. gonna remember maybe, that. Maybe, maybe Uncle Joe is gonna do a keg stand, you know, in his boxer shorts, and that'll be the thing they remember. But honestly, I think I think most people in the long term remember the photo ops because they have that album and they're not going to remember the tiny mistakes that are made so it's just like yeah get over yourself move on um as long know. as he as long as he went into the real first dance within right. 30 seconds right. absolutely sure After that, forget it even or, even if he didn't nobody else in the audience is going to know except the bride and groom so who's going to remember right. it? maybe the bride and groom but nobody else mm -hmm. I think that there is this weird kind of paradox where a DJ today, anybody in here who's a professional realizes what an intricate part they are of the event, you know, creating the timeline, making things run smoothly, working with other vendors, all these things. Yes, we are more 
valuable than a lot of our customers want to give us credit for. But having said that, we are not the most important thing there. So little mistakes. And I would consider screwing a song up or killing the volume or whatever the case might be. A minor mistake isn't going to be as important to everyone else as it is to you, the DJ. Own it. If you make a mistake, own it and get out. Right. That's it. Own it and get out of it. I have done this. Yeah. I used, I was down in Pennsylvania doing a wedding. Oh, God, had to have been 12, 13 years ago. And that was before DJ Event Planner and everything else. And I've known this bride. I had known this bride and girl for like two years. I used the bride's last name as Mr. and Mrs. Uh-huh. This woman comes up to me, Aunt Melver or whatever. You just ruined their wedding. Well, the bride and groom are rolling on the floor, laughing their asses off at me. I said, mm-hmm. all right, guys, can we, that was dress rehearsal. Can we do this again? And people look at me like I had 10 heads. I said, my friends and family, would you kindly welcome? Da, 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 da. The, I said to the bride and groom after their first dance, I said, they go, don't you ever apologize. That was the funniest thing we've ever seen. Her. As long as you freaking own your mistake. Right. Own it right. And don't wait to own it. Own it right after you do it. Yes. Yeah. Because it, we're, if you don't yeah. make a mistake, we all make mistakes. I don't care mm-hmm. what anybody says. We are not perfect. We are human. Mm-hmm. And you know what? And now, more than ever, right now, and I know you all agree with me, after the pandemic, things are moving at a 1,000 miles an hour. We haven't done mm-hmm. crap for 14 or 15 months. These people want everything now, mm-hmm. and they don't care how they get it. Brides mm-hmm. and grooms, uh, the, the ones I'm booking, 95% of my stuff is from, from past clients anyway. But I've heard nightmare. I got a hundred song song list for a wedding I'm doing in two weeks. I said, guys, just to let you know, I will do my darndest to get every one of those songs in. But I could also do your fifth wedding anniversary and your child's baptism with all these frigging with songs. All these songs. Yeah. No repeats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And with no repeats. But another, yeah. it's just got when you it, as a guest, whatever we talk about that first, Howie, um, just sit back, relax and enjoy the time off you have. You know, I've mm-hmm. got three other weddings this weekend. And you know what? I can't wait to sit. These kids are the DJs are from somewhere in New Jersey. And I'm looking forward to seeing the young cats do their thing. Yeah. Seeing that what, what our future holds for us. I remember being a young DJ. I started doing this. When I was 17 out doing weddings for a multi-op and I looked 17. In fact, I looked like, like a very vulnerable 17 year old. I weighed 125 pounds soaking wet. I, I, the, my clothes were, they weren't even fit, fitting me right. I had to come up with coping skills as a DJ. And I remember being an assistant for a long time. And I remember when we were using records, sometimes the floor was spongy. So the needle would skip and everybody would like uh, groan and moan. And then they'd have to reset the record or something or put the next record on. There were mistakes that happened. They were legitimate. Or maybe they just the crossfade at the wrong time, whatever the case might be. So I remember thinking to myself, how could you get out of this? How could you make this a win? So when I started doing it, the first time it ever happened to me, I killed it. And I, I let the commotion kind of die down. And I got on the microphone and I said, okay. On the count of three, everybody boo the DJ. One, two, three. They went boo. I said, I hope you all feel better about yourselves. Everybody laughed. <laughs> Next to him, bam. And I, yeah. I, to this day, I do that. If there's mm-hmm. ever a screw up, that's, that's the go-to. And mm-hmm. it always gets a laugh. Nobody cares. It's fun. I don't know. It's, it's just the go-to in case something bad happens. Something stupid. Mm-hmm. Listen. Listen, I do stupid well. I do stupid <laughs> well, honestly. You know, and it, it's just, just, you can't take yourself so seriously that you just don't let things happen. Quick story my boys got married in two wonderful venues here. Johnny Kelly from Boston was the first, was the one for my younger son in August. It'll be nine years in August. May of 2013, my youngest, my oldest one got married. And all the while, I'm going through chemo and everything else while all these are going on. Jason Janai brought four 
other DJs with him. They did not. The only time they stopped mixing was for toasts, um, honor dances with the parents, and everything else. I'm going to tell you right now, Jeffrey Scott Gould, they mixed the entire time. Johnny Kelly, on the other hand, uh, I love Johnny. He's a dear friend. They got there late. Thank God I had friends of mine that had a PA system we could use for the ceremony. And Michael Walter used his iPhone for the ceremony music. Make it happen. Make it happen. Get her done. Get her done. And I was I was the father of the groom. And I tried my dad. I'm like, so Johnny walks up to me and goes, well, what do you want me to do? I said, you're late. Get rolling. Don't 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 even come near me. Yeah, I've, I've never been late or anything else like that. I have made mistakes. We all have. If we if we deny that we've made mistakes, then we're lying, make mistakes. And you know what? Just own up to them. And what you were talking about, Howie, um, the second one. Yes. Are they going to? There are some people that will remember first dance. You played the wrong version of the first dance. OK, <laughs> OK. So you go back to it again, own your mistake and just go with it. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a, there, there's definitely, well, I know there's a line between incompetence because right, I've right. seen that we've all seen it or heard <laughs> about it. And, Oh, that was a dumb mistake. I hit the wrong button. I did this. It I did happens. That. There's a it big difference happens. between incompetence and, difference. and honest mistakes. So don't worry about the honest mistakes. Like you say, Sean, perfect. Just own it, own it and go. I- how many times have you been at a, at a wedding venue place that's got two or three weddings going on and a DJ from the other room comes in and says, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I forgot the bride and groom's first dance. Could you help me? Yeah. Or the mother, <laughs> son, father, daughter. Could you help me? It's been a long time, uh, but it's happened. Yeah. 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 Number one, there's no helping you. Number two, I will get you to songs, but let this be a lesson to you. And, you know. Uh, again, we all make mistakes. Now, Alex, where are you from again? Turn your mic on, pal. Turn the mic on. Thought it was on. There we go. So, yeah. He's from okay. Cyprus. Okay. Let's so, go, let's go to Bill. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go to Bill. Go ahead, Bill. <laughs> while he fixes. I had, I, I had a couple. I mean, Rudolph has, has some clubs, but my to me, like the the one that always kind of sticks in my head. Um, I had a wedding once with fourteen uh, couples being introduced for the introductions. Not, oh boy! Not including parents and bride and groom. And so we're getting through, you know, the list. And midway down the list is Jennifer and Jamie and Jessica and James. Following, you know, one before. Oh the boy! Other. And I introduced Jennifer and Jamie, and then introduced Tanya and David, and then went on continuing down through the list to the maid of honor and best man, and then the matron of honor and other best man, and then the bride and groom. And standing there after the bride and groom is Jessica and James. <laughs> Been there, and, done that too. And I. <laughs> Saw them standing there. Brian and Green get in the room. I get them a second big round of applause. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, once again, please direct your attention back towards the main entrance. Because Jessica and James were kind enough to let everybody else get ahead of them so the bride and groom could get in the room a little bit faster. And now <laughs> let them join us. <laughs> and they came in. And the whole time, they were like, was that planned? You know, like they had no clue. Right. So and that's I owned, it. Well, and I owned it before it happened. In my final <laughs> meeting with the couple, I said to them, Is there any chance we can spread these two out? I said, Because I just have a bad feeling I'm going to end up, you know, kind of flubbing that somehow. And sure enough, I, you know, I probably mentally put myself into flubbing it a week in advance. Um, but the bride and groom came up to me after their first dance. And uh, before heading over to their table, and they're like, "You called that one, but you did a good job of recovering from it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was it. I'm a sucker for a Rocky movie, and I think it was Rocky Balboa where Rocky's talking to his son, and he says something to the effect of, "It's not about whether you get knocked out or not; it's how you get back up." 
Yep. Right. And, Amen. Speaking Amen. of which, how about you, Alex from Cyprus? Have you corrected your little microphone mishap? Yeah, rule number one when you there do a deep voice, check your batteries. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Well, well can, I'm, can, I'm gonna can reveal do it during a normal that, Zoom meeting. You know, had to do it in real life. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna reveal a, a mistake that was not my own, but I owned it anyway. You know, kind of like uh, Brian says, you take one for the team. I made a, mo uh, a, a motion monogram for a client and I sent them proof and they said, okay, great. It's wonderful, beautiful. Get to the venue, put it up. Everybody's like, wow, that's beautiful, beautiful. And so I asked the bride, I said, how do you like your monogram? She said, it's gorgeous, but you spelled my name wrong. Oh, now, instead of saying, I sent you a proof. I just said, my apologies. I'm going to refund your money. So I immediately went up to the head table and I gave him two $100 bills. Wow. And at the end of the event, they gave me those two $100 bills back. Nice. Well, one of the other mistakes you made was inviting me on tonight, but we'll leave that one alone, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of being our own worst critics, another one from the, the uh, Ethernets here is... Oh, boy. And here it is. So last night, everyone thought I was amazing. I thought I kind of stunk. Uh, my song choices were great, but I just couldn't capture the whole crowd. And your point? Yeah. And yeah. your point? Occupational hazards, man. I'm, but do we need to capture the whole crowd? No. You know, you, you, you know what? I think the easiest way to break this down for anybody who thinks that because their dance floor is not packed all night, that they've failed. The, the, mm -hmm. the best way to wrap this all up, did everybody leave? The answer is no. No. And you facilitated a successful event. Correct. Regardless mm -hmm. of what the activity was that they partook in. Mm -hmm. Because I, there's another thing too, guys. There might be other factors of why the, dan the photo booth, the bar was real, you know, the bar was far away. God mm -hmm. forbid. You know which you know, one I had last night. I lost a lot of people and I thought, what's up? You know what it was? What? Church on Sunday. Very religious group. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna uh -huh. do? What are you gonna do? They no, enjoyed I've themselves, had an but they had to get home for bed. I had an event where the majority of the people were smokers mm -hmm. and they were outside. Yep. yep. How about you, Alex? Have you run into a situation such as that? Uh, well, like you just said, you know, um, not so much uh, with my venues because most of them are outside, so that's a bonus uh, okay. when it comes to smokers. Um, but I have done venues indoors, and it's literally like you look up, you know, the, the dance floor is full, and then somebody's decided to go for a cigarette, so their friend's gone with them, and their friend's friend's gone with them. And then all of a sudden there's a matter, it's like, what did I do? What's gone wrong? You know? And then you go outside and it's like, oh, there's a second party happening outside with all the smokers <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, uh, there could, think, like Sean said, there's various reasons. And, you know, the, the truth is at the end of the event was it an overall success, you know? And, you know, um, did the bride and groom go crazy? You know, that's what it's all about. Yes, they it, did. It, they had yeah. a great time. Not Listen, when I do my weddings, they know that right before the bride and groom come in, everybody, and I mean everybody's uh, surrounding that dance floor, we're going to get the biggest group shot of the night right before their first dance. Then after that, let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The, the, the other thing is, with, with a wedding, it's not an 18th or 21st. It's not your house party you know, with all your own friends. You know, it's a wedding which is multicultural. It spans all generations. 
So, you know, the chances of you getting everybody dancing at the same time all night, you know, is probably quite rare, you know, because, you know, maybe, you know, Auntie Auntie Doris is not going to be dancing to Cardi B, you know, but her like, you know, 18 year old what nieces. What the hell is you know? wrong with that woman? Doesn't everybody? Doesn't what everybody is going on? Cardi B? <laughs> what is going on with the world today? Eh? I swear <laughs> some of this music is just like. OK, they're going to dance to Megan the Stallion. And then you're going to go from there into I w- I went from get low from low to get low into the Pina Colada song. Nice. They went yeah. berserk. And I'm going, excuse my language. How the hell did that just work? Guardians of the went, Galaxy. I was Guardians I, of the I, Galaxy. I was blessed. And then I go into oh. Mambo number five and uh, my I, the bride that was, I was a wonderful girl. I call her my white claw bride because by the time we got to the end of the night, she was a dozen in and this woman was <laughs> cross-eyed and she comes up, hugs me. She goes, can you do another five minutes? I said, honey, I can't. We have to hard stop at 1030 because it's an outdoor venue and everything else. And I saw it <laughs> so funny. I did a wedding the week after for friends of theirs. I had no idea they were going to be there. They were there. And the groom comes up and goes, I just wanted to thank you. I said, for what? He goes, there's nobody that's been able to tame my wife but you. (laughs) I said, White Claw and Big Daddy don't mix. I love my girl. And that was all she that she came and hung with me for like half an hour at the second wedding. It was great. You know, it all depends. You got to the one thing. That the newer DJs that you want to let them know. Is mixing is great. Brian, you're one of the best. And all these other folks, these guys are the Nick Spinell is everybody else. But the thing that connects is this right here. And that's called heart, mm-hmm. you know, and now more than ever, we need that because of everything that we've done or lack of everything we've done in the past 16 months is everybody's coming out of this going, Oh, we're ready. And how many times have you seen, the DJs have put up these pictures of packed dance floors. Guys, if you can't get a packed dance floor after 16 months of not doing this and people not being able to celebrate, get out the business. Whew. Yeah. yeah. Get, mm-hmm. get out the business. Ready I put up a couple of things like Saturday night. I did a wedding. No announcement for the first dance. No introductions. They had a great jazz group for cocktail hour and part of dinner. These guys were phenomenal. Just I played the first dance. They danced to it. I played the father, daughter, mother, son, one song, no, no announcement. They just danced. They knew when to dance. They only, I made three announcements. Cake cutting, last call, which they really wanted, and good night. That was it. Done. Yeah. And somebody mm-hmm. goes, did that bother you? I said, why would it bother me? Because that's what they asked for. Yeah. But, but you love to hear yourself talk, Mr. DJ? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it, draw, it drove me nuts because I really want I knew what, I knew what I could have done with that crowd. But that's why I put up the YMCA thing. Guys, I did not even preface. All right, everybody. This is the bright one of the bright's favorite songs. Nope. I hit play. They went nuts. As I soon needed. as I got done, I went right into celebration. Another one she liked. That was it. Why? 45 minutes. Not didn't say a word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like. You did everything we asked. <laughs> That's why you hired me. <laughs> That's why you hired me. You know, everybody thinks yeah, Big Daddy, nice. this, you know, the big celebration. Yeah, but I also listen to my clients. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Listen, I'm 180 years old. I'm booked into 2023 right Who now. Who are you, Howie? <laughs> older than me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm older. I'm older than Howie, but Howie, remember, we have a triple threat match coming up whenever we see Ben Stowe. Very it's, ben, it's Ben versus Howie versus me. Their asses are in trouble. <laughs> I think we, we might be. You've been working out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 58 pounds note, down since last year. On that note, yeah. I think we're part of fork in this one. Thank you all for being guests, and thank you all for tuning oh. in. And we will see you next week with... Who knows what we're going to find on the Ethernets. We're going to talk about going to the buffet next week. Thank you. (laughs) Good night, y'all. Night, y'all.